Harvard University is the oldest university in the USA and one of the world's most recognized and renowned. The university has had a very interesting and rich history, which dates back hundreds of years. We look at Harvard history in more detail in today's guide. Harvard history dates back to 1620, when over 17,000 Puritans migrated to New England and they realized a need to train clergy for the new commonwealth. It was first founded by ministers, and the first benefactor was John Harvard, after who the university was later named. In 1650, Harvard received its corporate charter and began teaching classes. It didn't officially become a university until 1780. Early Harvard University mainly taught religious studies, with over half of the graduates becoming ministers. This quickly changed, and in the 1760s, only 15% of graduates were ministers. Harvard University students and graduates become an influential part of the early beginnings of the United States. Ten of the first 12 U.S. presidents were graduates of Harvard University. The first graduate to become a U.S. president was John Adams, the second president. Many of the original Harvard buildings still stand today and are one of the main attractions for tourists to Cambridge and the Harvard University campus. Religion and philosophy has played a very important role in Harvard history. In 1805, Harvard was taken over by the Unitarians which marked the point at which Harvard became secularized, leading it to be referred to as the Unitarian Vatican. By the early 1900s, under Harvard President Charles W. Eliot, Christianity was eliminated from the Harvard University curriculum, which sparked a major change in the university system. Instead, students were encouraged to self-direct themselves in regards to religion. This led to Harvard University being considered as one of the most liberal of the top universities such as Yale and Princeton. Harvard saw some of its biggest growth between the years of 1830 and 1870, when Harvard became privatized. This made the university become much more elite, and the majority of students were upper class or members of the professional community. The privatization led to Harvard having three times the assets of Yale University by 1850. It was around this period that Henry Adams pointed out that parents were sending their kids to Harvard largely because of the social benefits. The 1900s also saw the rise in sports at Harvard University. The popular sport of football was twice banned at Harvard University for being too dangerous during the late 1800s. However, the sport was quickly reinstated and became a dominant force at the university. In the 1880s, thanks to a donation of $100,000 from the class of 1879, the first steel-reinforced concrete sports stadium was built at Harvard University. The stadium was completed in 1903 and sparked a huge increase in intercollegiate sports competitions. Harvard University continued to go from strength to strength during the 20th century. Currently it is ranked by many as being the best university in the world and many of the most influential figures of last century have studied or being affiliated with Harvard. Between the 1940s and 1960s, the admissions procedure saw a major shift. Instead of places at Harvard being reserved solely for privileged New England prep school students, admission was granted more so on academic ability and achievements than background. Harvard also became a lot more liberal in admitting students of different religions, with the number of Jews and Catholics quickly increasing during this period. Although women were allowed to study at Harvard University as early as the late 1800s, they were segregated and had to enroll at Radcliffe College. It wasn't until the 1977 that Radcliffe and Harvard colleges combined and both male and females were admitted onto the same courses. Throughout the 20th century, more and more graduate and undergraduate schools were built, significantly increasing the student population. The international reputation of the university grew, and Harvard now continues to attract some of the world's brightest minds.